So there's been some news recently. Actually, there's been a good amount of One Piece news recently. Oda's editor crying a while back. We got a recent confirmation about the 10th crew member that Luffy was talking about in chapter one actually being an additional member. But today's news I wanna address is in regards to One Piece potentially ending because Oda has really been hammering home the fact that the series is gonna end in four to five years. About a year ago, he did an interview saying that the series is gonna end in five years. And then most recently he came out again and confirmed Firm that it's gonna end in four to five years. And his editors as well have kind of getting the point across of like, hey, the series is really ending soon. Now, personally, I never really believed it because I just didn't feel like it was enough time to flesh out the story. And it's kind of been a debatable topic. Plus Oda with his timelines of when the story is gonna end has never been consistent. But luckily for us, one fan went straight to the source and asked Oda in SBS 97 if he was really serious about the series ending in four to five years. And his answer answer is kind of up to interpretation a little bit. So with this translation is directly from Artur from the Library of Ohara. Check his stuff out. He does great stuff. So essentially the fan asks Oda, are you actually ending the series in four to five years? I'm going to be really sad, but I'm also happy you're taking a break. And then Oda responds, correct. Rather than wanting to stop, it's that the series will come to an end because the most exciting part of Luffy's adventure, being the story of what is One Piece, will come to its conclusion. So even just this first part of his response is kind of cryptic and it's not just the English translation. People were kind of arguing about it on Twitter about even the Japanese Raws and how it's kind of up in the air as to what it's referring to. But after reading a lot of people's conversations on Twitter and different translations, I think the general gist of it is this. The fan asked specifically specifically if the things that Oda are referring to in the interviews about One Piece ending in four to five years, if that is true. And Oda did confirm that, yes, that is true. Um, when I'm talking about One Piece ending in four to five years, I'm being serious. However, the vague part is, what is he actually referring to when he's talking about One Piece or the story of One Piece ending in four to five years? Because he says here in this first part, the most exciting part of the story, Luffy's adventure essentially of becoming the Pirate King, that will soon come to his conclusion. So to me, I think you can interpret this as in four to five years, give or take, because Oda's still bad with timing and it is COVID, but in about four to five years, we will have a new Pirate King and we will find out what the One Piece is. But after that, there is the possibility of the story still continuing. And that's how we get to the topic of this video and why I believe Emu and the world government will be the final villains of One Piece. And of course, if you like videos like this, please hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. But continuing on with the translation of Oda's answer, he essentially says if Luffy can safely set sail from Wano, which I believe he will, there will be developments on a global scale and Oda says he will draw the greatest war in One Piece history. And he sums up his answer by saying he really wanted to talk about One Piece Piece ending to get the point across to the readers that One Piece is actually ending soon and he told us to enjoy Wano while it's still hot. Now obviously Oda's answer is pretty dense here and there's a lot of little things you could pick out from it but we're only gonna mainly focus on the final villain part here. If you want to see a video about Luffy versus Blackbeard becoming the Pirate King or what islands will go to after Wano leave a comment below and I'll put those to the top of my list. But as far as final villain goes and about One Piece ending once again I think Oda really hammered home that four to five years timeline because he's been inconsistent before but he really wants us to know that the story is ending soon and some people don't like how he does this and how he like kind of gets us ready and prepared for the story ending but this is a long story this is a story that's been ongoing for 20 plus years i don't think it's weird for him to want to give us some expectation that a story as long as this is actually coming to an end i think what he's mainly referring to is luffy's journey of becoming the pirate king and us finding out what the one piece is i still don't think is exactly going to be like five years because we are in a pandemic but we'll see but if Oda is correct and he's actually going to finish it in four to five years I think that's enough time for the story of Luffy becoming the Pirate King to end but when we're expanding the world of One Piece and talking about all the other loose ends and about the history and the world government I don't think there's enough time for that and that's where Emu and the world government comes in as the final villains and that's why I think after Luffy becomes the Pirate King there will be an additional final great war to go up against the world government because to me one piece almost has two stories one is luffy becoming the pirate king the kind of what gets us into the series you know right away he says i want to become the pirate king he starts picking up nakama every single island traveling island to island discovering new places that was the majority of the pre-time skip vibe but when we hit that summit war saga 
things shifted. The world expanded way beyond what we knew. We learned more about the world government, the history. Of course, there were sprinkles of this as time went on, like in Indy's lobby, also Jaya. But slowly but surely, we got so much more involved with this world as a whole, with its politics, its history, and so many other people. And for the most part, the Straw Hats haven't really involved themselves too heavily with that side of things. The only person that has a strong connection is Robin because O'Hara was destroyed by the world government and she's been chased down for all her life. But even that storyline, I feel like has kind of fizzled and been put in the back seat. But things are definitely ramping up on a global scale as Oda said. We got six whole chapters of the Reverie where we learned all about what's happening there. The Shichibukai system gets abolished. It's a new SSG thing. Fishman Island is getting relocated. Revolutionaries are attacking there. And of course, then we find out there is Emu. And even in between these acts of Wana, Oda is choosing to jump into the outside world and give us more information about things happening with Vivi, the aftermath of the Reverie, what happened to Sabo. He's kind of slowly hyping it up and giving us a lot more information but we can't quite get to that storyline yet because there's still the other storyline of Luffy's adventure and that's the storyline we have to mainly focus on because there's the straw hats that have to get their shine as the main cast they have their own dreams Luffy wants to travel and explore and get to the final island so they have to do that they're not gonna just all of a sudden pivot and go to the world government and fight them so I think in the end in four to five years maybe a little longer Luffy and his crew will reach Laugh Tale have a clash with Blackbeard and find out what the one pieces. Meanwhile, like Oda says, things are expanding on a global scale. The world government is making moves. There's a cleanse supposedly happening. And these two storylines are slowly going to merge into this one final grand war of Luffy and the Straw Hats and all his allies versus the world government. And I think storytelling wise, that would make sense. And it would give Oda enough time to completely flesh out the story. If he really wanted to squeeze it into four to five years, this may be doable, but I don't see it. So now that we've addressed the SBS and about the timeline of everything, Thing. The next question is, why would Luffy go after the world government? Because in a way, Luffy's kind of selfish, right? He wants that freedom. He only goes after what he wants to do. He always says he's not a hero, he's a pirate. And it's been a consistent theme and it fits his need for freedom. But I also think that's why it would make sense for Luffy to go after the world government, this government that's been limiting the freedoms of all these other countries. By then, he should know what the One Piece is and find out more about the history of the Void Century and all that. But that's another video in itself, I don't think it's gonna be as simple as the world government is just bad and they took over and made the whole world bad. I feel like it's gonna be deeper than that. But that won't change the fact they're terrible people and the system that they've set up around the world is very, very bad. And the other thing consistent with Luffy is that when he sees other people are in need of help, he takes action. Anybody who helped him, treated him nicely, anyone who he sees as a friend, he always has his motivation to help them when they're in need. And with freedom being a huge theme of the story, Story, I feel like when Luffy finally realizes that the entire world is kind of being shackled by the system of the world government, he'll have some more incentive to take action as well. There's also many storylines building up around the world that could definitely tie into Luffy going up against the world government. When we saw Emu, he had a knife stab through Vivi, so something might have happened to her. Cobra, probably dead. The man's had death flags since the moment we've met him. So if something happened to those two, there's another reason there for Luffy to take action. And the world government was also talking about a cleansing and you have all these countries that are kind of very friendly with Luffy like Drum Island, Dressrosa, Alabasta, Fishman Island. The world government probably not in love with that so they might go after those countries so that could be another motivation of Luffy going after the world government. There's also the question of what happened to Sabo which last we saw a lot of people were reacting to news like oh my god Sabo what happened to you? I don't believe he's an actual danger and that he's been captured because that would just feel like a copy and paste moment from the Ace situation. And plus, if Sabo is in danger, that would be a direct pivot from Luffy to go after them. And I don't feel like that should be the case post Wano. It's too early for these two storylines to merge. I want to focus on Luffy's adventure first. If we're getting into Endgame, I feel like you really have to focus in on the Straw Hats, give them their shine, focus on them accomplishing their dream soon. And then in the end, you could have that final war and everything ties together. You can still have stuff building up in the background. Just don't be a direct pivot and like Luffy has to go to Marineford and save Sabo or something that would just feel kind of jarring and rushed. I think a better way to do it and one a lot of people have speculated is Sabo did something as a cover-up or the world government is covering something up by using Sabo as the villain. So it could be saying Sabo killed Cobra or something like that but in reality something else happened or maybe Sabo got captured and then later on we find out he actually did
didn't and it was a big ploy with sword or something else. I feel like by doing that, you could have it be an important intense situation that we have to keep getting information on, but it doesn't have to jump directly into the main storyline right away. Sabo and the revolutionaries will be a major factor later on in that final war, because let's be real, Luffy is not gonna like go and restart a new government. He probably just wants to go and be like, oh, I wanna kick their ass for doing bad things. The person leading the charge there will be the revolutionaries with Dragon. So these two storylines meeting up could be Luffy finally accomplishing his dream, becoming the Pirate King, finding out like the history of everything with the One Piece and getting a new incentive to go after the world government. Meanwhile, you have his father and brother spearheading this war against the world government as well. And I think that's how it will all come together in the end in this one final war. Because if Luffy finds out that Sabo is going up against the world government as well, that will definitely give him another incentive. I know Dragon is his dad too, but he doesn't frankly give a damn that Dragon is his dad. He didn't even know he was his dad until a while back. There's another connection there as well with Robin who worked with the revolutionaries during the time skip. So yeah, just another connection there to tie it all together. And I feel like Robin definitely would have a lot of incentive to go after the world government as well. Even beyond that, you have a bunch of other storylines that could slowly tie in like Fishman Island getting destroyed by Luffy. I'm sure all these little things, things about Joy Boy and all that will slowly come to light as we get to this final war. And this final war, I believe is the greatest war in One Piece that Oda is referring to. Also in an interesting way, Marie Joa might be the final arc because every single arc is named after islands, right? And Marie Joa, we haven't been there. And honestly, like Nami wants to draw the world map. Luffy wants to see every island. Going to Marie Joa will kind of help both of those things as well. So for me, that's why I think Emu will become the last villain. I think it makes sense storytelling wise, especially with the new information that we just got out of SBS 97. And I also think there is incentive for Luffy to go there later. Like if you think about the final villain candidates, it's always been Blackbeard, Akainu, and recently Emu. And I've always thought Emu will be the last villain as soon as he was introduced. But with with this SBS, it kind of confirms it for me in a way. I think the main story that Oda is talking about ending in four to five years, Luffy becoming the Pirate King, that his main villain there is going to be Blackbeard. And that sets up Blackbeard nicely as a final villain. In a way, it's just that he's the final villain for Luffy's journey. And I think that's fitting because Blackbeard has always been making moves to become the Pirate King. But then after that, you have to solve the other storylines and that's when this big war comes in. And that's where I think, first off, you will get Luffy and Sabo versus Akainu. And in a way, it's kind of a preliminary fight before the final fight against Emu. I think we will definitely spend a ton of time on that. It has to get fleshed out Akainu's backstory and all that. By the way, the Marines are another element to think about with this. Like throughout the story, we've seen the Marines as antagonists and they are very corrupt, but we've met these good Marines like Kobe, Smoker, Helmeppo, X Drake, who just recently asked to join Luffy's side. And I did a video on this in the past, but I think these guys are gonna be the next generation of Marines. And there's probably gonna be an inner battle when that final war comes. I do wonder how that rebellion is gonna go, but I'll probably save that for another video of talking about Sword. But yeah, with the Kainu, I think that's gonna be a preliminary fight leading up to the final fight with Emu. And I think that's kind of fitting as well because Emu is the person we know the least about. And so with that final fight, you could really flesh it out and find out a lot of information about the past and who he is and the world government. And meanwhile, with the other villains that have been a little more fleshed out, like Blackbeard has gotten the most shine out of these three, we get to go deal with him first and find out more about his story. And then later on with Akainu, who's gotten a little more shine, but then we get to spend more time with him before finally facing off against this complete unknown in Emu. And then once you win that war, a new government will probably come into place and the world will be a nice, peaceful, happy place. I still don't really know the specifics of how the story is going to carry out. There's a lot of blank spaces that I left out, but that's the beauty of One Piece and what makes it a great, well-built story. You never really know what's coming next and how it's going to get executed. What do you guys think? What did you think about Otis answers in SBS 97? Who do you think the final villain will be? And how do you think the story will continue? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And as always, you want to keep up to date with when I'm posting new videos or doing live streams, you got to hit that subscribe button. By the time this video goes up, the King Pirates crew will be over 5,050 members. You want to hang out and chat with other members of the crew. The King Pirates Discord is up and running. Link in the description below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm the King4. Got a video for you right there. Playlist for you right there. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.